Patamawagga. Translated by Bhikkhu Sujato. With Kasapa. First. So I have heard. At one time the Buddha was staying near Sarvati in Jeta's Grove, an Artapindika's monastery. Then, late at night, the glorious god Kasapa, lighting up the entire Jeta's Grove, went up to the Buddha, bowed, stood to one side and said to him, The Buddha has revealed the mendicant, but not his instructions to a mendicant. Well then, Kasapa, clarify this matter yourself. They should train in following good advice, in attending closely to ascetics, in sitting alone in hidden places, and in calming the mind. That's what the god Kasapa said, and the teacher approved. Then Kasapa, knowing that the teacher approved, bowed and respectfully circled the Buddha, keeping him on his right, before vanishing right there. with Kasapa, second. At Sarvati, standing to one side, the god Kasapa recited this verse in the Buddha's presence. Suppose a mendicant is a meditator, freed in mind. If they want to reach the heart's peace, having known the arising and passing of the world, healthy-minded, independent, that is their reward. with Magha. At Sarvati, then, late at night, the glorious god Magha, lighting up the entire Jeta's grove, went up to the Buddha, bowed, stood to one side, and addressed the Buddha in verse. When what is incinerated do you sleep at ease? When what is incinerated is there no sorrow? What is the one thing whose killing you approve? When anger's incinerated, you sleep at ease. When anger's incinerated, there is no sorrow. Watrabhu, anger, has a poisoned root and a honey tip. The noble ones praise the slaying of anger, for when it's incinerated, there is no sorrow. With Magata At Sarvati Standing to one side, the god Magadha addressed the Buddha in verse. How many lamps are there to shine their light on the world? We've come to ask the Buddha, how are we to understand this? There are four lamps in the world, a fifth is not found. The sun shines by day, the moon glows at night, while a fire burns both by day and by night. But a Buddha is the best of lights. This is the Supreme Radiance. With Dharmali At Sarvati Then late at night the glorious god Dharmali, lighting up the entire Jeta's grove, went up to the Buddha, bowed, stood to one side, and recited this verse in the Buddha's presence. This is what should be done by a Brahmin, unrelenting, striving. Then with the giving up of sensual pleasures, they won't hope to be reborn. The Brahmin has nothing left to do, said the Buddha to Dharmani, for they've completed their task. So long as a person fails to gain a footing in the river, they strive with every limb. But someone who has gained a footing and stands on dry land need not strive, for they have reached the far shore. Dharmali, this is a simile for the Brahmin, alert, a meditator who has ended defilements. Since they've reached the end of rebirth and death, they need not strive, for they have reached the far shore. With Karmada At Sarvati, standing to one side, the god Karmada said to the Buddha, it's too hard, blessed one, it's just too hard. 
They do it even though it's hard, said the Buddha to Kamada, the stable trainees with ethics and immersion. For one who has entered the homeless life, contentment brings happiness. Such contentment, blessed one, is hard to find. They find it even though it's hard, said the Buddha to Kamada, those who love peace of mind, whose minds love to meditate day and night. But it's hard, blessed one, to immerse this mind in samadhi. They become immersed in samadhi even though it's hard, said the Buddha to Kamada, those who love calming the faculties. Having cut through the net of death, the noble ones, Kamada, go on their way. But this path, blessed one, is rough and hard to travel. Though it's rough, hard to travel, the noble ones, Kamada, go on their way. The ignoble fall head first on a rough path. But the path of the noble ones is smooth, for the noble ones are smooth amid the rough. With Panchala Chanda At Sarvati Standing to one side, the god Panchala Chanda recited this verse in the Buddha's presence. The opening amid confinement was discovered by the Buddha of vast intelligence, who woke up to the absorption, the sage, the solitary bull. Even amid confinement they discover, said the Buddha to Panchala Chanda, the principle for attaining extinguishment. Those who have acquired mindfulness are perfectly serene in samadhi. With Tayana At Sarvati Then late at night the glorious god Tayana, formerly a religious founder, lighting up the entire Jeta's grove, went up to the Buddha, bowed, stood to one side and recited these verses in the Buddha's presence. Strive and cut the stream. Dispel sensual pleasures, Brahmin. A sage who doesn't give up sensual pleasures is not reborn in a unified state. If one is to do what should be done, one should staunchly strive. For the life gone forth, when laxly led, just stirs up dust all the more. It's better to leave a bad deed undone Later you burn for that misdeed. It's better to do a good deed after which you'll not regret. When kusa grass is wrongly grasped, it only cuts the hand. So too the ascetic life, when wrongly taken, drags you to hell. Any lax act, any corrupt observance or suspicious spiritual life is not very fruitful. That's what the god Tayana said. Then he bowed and respectfully circled the Buddha, keeping him on his right before vanishing right there. Then, when the night had passed, the Buddha told the mendicants all that had happened. Mendicants, tonight the glorious god Tayana, formerly a religious founder, lighting up the entire Jeta's grove, came to me, bowed, stood to one side, and recited these verses in my presence. The Buddha repeated the verses in full, adding, that's what the god Tayana said. Then he bowed and respectfully circled me, keeping me on his right side, before vanishing right there. Mendicants, learn the verses of Tayana. Memorize the verses of Tayana. Remember the verses of Tayana. These verses are beneficial and relate to the fundamentals of the spiritual life. the moon. At Sarvati. Now at that time the moon god had been seized by Rahu, lord of demons. Then the moon god, recollecting the Buddha, at that time recited this verse. Homage to you, Buddha, hero, you're freed in every way. I've wandered into confinement. Be my refuge. Then the Buddha addressed Rahu in verse concerning the moon god. The moon god has gone for refuge to the realised one, the perfected one. Rahu, release the moon. Buddhas have compassion for the world. Then Rahu, having released the moon, rushed to see Wepachiti, lord of demons, and stood to one side, 
shocked and awestruck. Wepachiti addressed him in verse. Why the rush? Rahu, you released the moon and came here looking like you're in shock. Why do you stand there so scared? My head would have exploded in seven pieces. I would have found no happiness in life if, when enchanted by the Buddha's spell, I had not released the moon. The Sun At Sarvati Now at that time the Sun God had been seized by Rahu, Lord of Demons. Then the Sun God, recollecting the Buddha, at that time recited this verse. Homage to you, Buddha, hero. You're freed in every way. I've wandered into confinement. Be my refuge. Then the Buddha addressed Rahu in verse concerning the Sun God. The Sun God has gone for refuge to the realised one, the perfected one. Rahu, release the sun. Buddhas have compassion for the world. He fills the darkness with light, the shining sun, circle of magnificent flame. Rahu, do not swallow him as he traverses the sky. Rahu, release my progeny, the sun. Then Rahu, having released the sun, rushed to see Wepachiti, lord of demons, and stood to one side, shocked and awestruck. Wepachiti addressed him in verse, Why the rush, Rahu, you released the sun? and came here looking like you're in shock. Why do you stand there so scared? My head would have exploded in seven pieces. I would have found no joy in life if, when enchanted by the Buddha's spell, I had not released the sun.' 